time. Four. Blurgasm. <laughs> Hey, what's up, Nerdgasm fans? Jerry here, aka Barnacles, and I'm back at Dirtfish Rally School. And you know what? We're gonna play with some drones and rally cars. Stay tuned. Alright, so today we have two aircraft that we're going to be reviewing. We have the DJI Phantom 3 Professional right here, which is a 4K capable recording rig, and we also have the DJI Inspire 1. Now there's been a lot of confusion about these aircrafts because of the drastic price difference, because they both have similar video capabilities and that they're capable of 4K. But we're going to go through all of the major differences between these two aircraft today and show you both the pros and the cons and demonstrate that they are both very, very different aircraft and have very different applications. All right guys, so we're gonna start off with the DJI Phantom 3 Professional here. It's basically the newest aircraft that's been kind of shaking everything up in the community. And we'll start out by basically releasing the lens from it because this is something that a lot of people forget and honestly, I actually forgot it during the Phantom 2 shoot and we had to, we had to redo it. But you have a little plastic bracket down here on the bottom that holds the camera in place. That way you don't damage it when you're transporting it. And to remove it, you basically just have to slide it out and then the camera is free. You can see it moves around. It's a very delicate mechanism, so you want to be careful with it. So always make sure that you replace this. And the orientation is always like this straight on with the aircraft. It's really easy to get it mixed up. I wish there were some more arrows and stuff printed on here, but you know, it does work and it does serve its purpose. So the next step is we have to take the aircraft and calibrate the compass inside of it. It's the magnetic compass that basically helps orient the aircraft so we don't go slamming into stuff. And it's one of the many things the aircraft has that allows it to orient itself in addition to GPS and the VPS system, which is new to this after the Phantom 2. All right, so the first thing we need to do is power up the aircraft. For that, you just push the button on the back twice. You push once and hold, in theory. Yep, there we go. It's powering, well, there it goes. First thing we want to do now that the aircraft is powered on is calibrate the compass. That's actually a really important step you want to do every time you fly. So we're just going to go into the aircraft status menu and click the calibrate button. Go ahead and click OK. It asks if it has any metal objects around us. Right now, we don't have any metal objects around. That's actually a really concerning thing when you're calibrating the compass because if it's confused, the aircraft will be confused. Go ahead and click OK. Okay, it gives us on-screen directions saying that we need to pick up the aircraft and rotate it 360 degrees horizontally. So we're gonna just go ahead and pick it up and walk around it. And we're just gonna wait, okay, it says set it down. Now the second step is to face it nose down and then rotate it another 360 degrees. And you'll see a change in the lights. There we go. And there you have it. Now we're calibrated and we can safely fly the aircraft. Well, it's time to get this aircraft up into the sky. We're all calibrated and good to go. So I've got the software up here on the screen and right now we're set up for 4K 30 frames per second it looks like. So I'm going to show you a little feature that they don't really advertise. Up here in the corner, this tiny, tiny little button that says AE next to it, that's auto exposure. We want to turn that on. And it's basically going to lock it so that if I'm moving it around in and out of the sun, it has control over the exposure instead of me manually having to do it, which is kind of an important feature, especially shooting on a sunny day like this. All right, so now we're going to attempt to cut the cameraman's legs off and take off. Yeah, there you go, buddy. There you go. Now nobody dies. All right, let's go. Now the first thing you notice immediately flying this thing is it has much more powerful motors than the Phantom 2 did. If you guys saw the Phantom 2 Vision Plus video that we did, uh, if you haven't seen it, go check it out. But if we did it, it demonstrates that the Phantom 2 is a little bit anemic in some situations. They definitely rectified it with this thing because it's got a lot more go juice. Plus the motors are a lot more efficient too. Now let's go ahead and start a recording here. I'm gonna go ahead and just leave it hovering. Just touch the little record button right there on the screen. And the cool thing is, with the light bridge, this aircraft can go out nearly a mile in ideal situations. And there have been some reports of even going further than that. So you can actually safely pilot the aircraft from the video feed, which is really, really cool. All right, I'm gonna fly over to the Dirtfish building over here. And it gets, it gets out there. That's the one thing about light bridge on this aircraft is the aircraft can get out to where you don't even see it 
hardly anymore. But so then you do have to rely on that light bridge and that video feed. So we're gonna go ahead and drop it down in front of the building here. All right, go ahead and pan across. And then I got a cool shot. Okay, now we're gonna bring it back. Eyes me, eyes me, eyes me. Spin around and punch it. It definitely seems a lot more responsive than the Phantom 2 was. And we actually. Oh no! All right. There... Yeah, yeah, it's fine, dude. It'll buff out. <laughs> We actually are dealing with a little bit of wind today and it's handling it really well. I am bound for the promised land. I'm bound for the promised land. Bound for the promised, 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 bound for the promised land. All right, so Graham, what's the first thing we gotta do to get this thing up and running? First thing we gotta do is we gotta put our strap on. Do I even get dinner first? I'll put it on. You never put on a strap on before? I've never put on a strap on, dude. Jeez. What is this thing even for? There, you, oh, there you go. Close. It's pretty close. No. It has to cover the tits, though. I think we're ready to go. Wait, where does this go? Well, that one goes between your legs. You're joking, right? No. That's not your DJI controller, Jerry. You said it was a strap on. All right, so guys, we brought the Inspire 1 outside here, and it's starting to rain a little bit, so we figured, uh, why not see how the Inspire 1 does in the rain, right? Okay, so right now we're ready to fly. We got our controllers hooked up, both controllers. I am the camera operator, Correct. and you're gonna be the guy flying it. So I get to focus 100% on moving the camera around in 360 degrees, pan, tilt, all that stuff, and you focus on flying it. The home point has been updated. Take off. Ooh, this is cool. See, look, I'm tracking us with the camera. That is really neat. So I went ahead and hit record on there. So Here. we're now recording. I'm gonna show our cameraman over there. See, look, this is cool. So I can independently control the camera and it stays pointing in the direction that I put it even when you're maneuvering. Exactly. That is fantastic. Look at that, look at that in the wind. Woo, it's, it's fighting the, the wind, look at that. Look at that. So it's, it's windy as hell right now and look at it holding its it's holding. Even in all that wind, that is cool. All right, so that was a good first flight. And the cool thing is we actually flew it out in the rain and it didn't seem to be bothered. It is very windy here today. And this thing actually handles the wind like great. Even with a really like, we're getting a good breeze right now. That thing was just like sideways holding its position. Also, another cool thing that we're gonna play around with this thing on a little later is this is equipped with light bridge. That's DJI's ultra long range wireless system. In theory, this thing can get out like four or 5,000 feet line of sight. All right, so now we're gonna do an indoor flight with this aircraft. Now, what is really cool about the Inspire One is it actually has an array of optical sensors underneath it that basically scan the ground so that when you're indoors and you have problems with GPS lock or your compass is drifting, you basically have another element to keep the aircraft grounded. And that's really, really cool because you want the aircraft to stay where you put it. It just makes operating it that much easier. So because of that, Graham's gonna let me fly this thing indoors. All right, so fire it up just like the fan just sticks in. Okay, we got some blades moving and just give it some power. Here we go. We're up. We are flying. You're in ATTI mode now. Now I do notice that it does tend to have a little bit of a drift. If you, if you stabilize it in one area, it stays. But if you're if you got forward momentum and you just let go of the stick, it does just keep going. Correct. So you do have to be conscious of that. Woo, that's a lot of wind. I'll tell you what, compared to the Phantom though, this thing's got some balls for speed. Oh my God. It's we, incredibly fast. We're gonna get some footage guys of this thing outside going some great distance at high speed because this is, this is nuts.
All right, so I did find one thing that I don't like about the controller, and that is this little bracket right here can move pretty easily and it can get worn out. And if you try to tighten this down, um, you can break it. So you have to be really, really careful with this thing. But if it gets a little too worn out, you'll find that your tablet just kind of flops down like that. I don't think you'd have as much of a problem with a lighter device like a cell phone, but it's just something to be conscious of. Right. Yeah, see what I mean? It's even worse on this other controller. All right, guys, so one of the cool things about this aircraft, of course, is the light bridge capability where you can get it out a massive distance. So we're gonna go ahead and test that for you right now by taking this sucker up and we're gonna record the whole thing with the onboard camera. Let's go. Hey, there we are. Hi. Here we go, you guys. Uh, we're at an altitude of about 100 feet right now. Altitude about 140 feet, 150, 60, 70, 80. Now this thing's got a hell of an ascent speed. And this is cool, we were actually flying over the Dirtfish compound. And I still, as you guys can see, I still have full control over the camera. Yep, so we're 800 feet out, 900 feet out, 1,000 feet out. You guys can see it gives us an indicator right here. And while the pilot can see the, the overview of the GPS and everything, I'm actually seeing the live video. Look at that, there's a tracker. I feel like one of those guys that can shoot like missiles from like uh, the helicopter. Pew, pew, pew. All right, we're starting to get a couple little artifacts, but the video is still very, very usable, and the leg isn't horribly bad. It's about a second. 3,000 feet, this thing's away from us right now. So just to give you guys an idea, that building that's way over here down there, that's the planter building that we were in earlier. And now we're, we're flying down a river. Wow, dude. I gotta admit, this is pretty exciting. The video feed is, is still fantastic. Okay, we're getting some artifacts. Not bad though, I can still see. It says weak image transmission signal at about 3,000 feet. You're traveling at 30 miles an hour. Give it the beans. See, a, a, we're tiny, tiny little specks down there. Look at that. Also, fun little trivia fact, this is actually where they filmed the TV series, Twin Peaks. I'll tell you what guys, above all, uh, for all of its pros and faults, just being able to focus on one thing is actually pretty remarkable. Because whenever I'm flying drones, the camera is not what I'm focusing on. Like I try to give some kind of priority to the camera, but it's really not what I'm focusing on. It's piloting the craft. And to be able to just let Andrew sit over there, white knuckled, sweating bullets, trying to figure out how to fly this thing, I can just look at anything I want. And that is awesome. So we're at 70% battery right now. So we're doing pretty good here. We're at 70% after we're at that? 70%. This thing's got solid batteries. The only thing this thing's missing is like a 200 millimeter zoom lens. All right, so now we're gonna test a feature of this aircraft and it's the same on both the Phantom and the Inspire with one exception and that is return to home. That is if you are having an oh shit moment and you need to get this thing back, you can literally hold down this button on the controller and the aircraft will actually return to where it took off from. Now the difference between the Phantom 3 and the Inspire 1 is the Inspire 1 has dynamic return to home, which can basically track wherever the controller is and return to the controller. So if you're on a moving thing like a boat or something like that, it's much more useful. With the Phantom 3, it's gonna to return to the point at which it took off, which if you're out on a boat might be a problem. But here, let's go ahead and demonstrate it. Let's get it in the air here. It's complaining about a low battery, but that's okay, because we're gonna get it right back. Okay, now by default, it's set to 60 feet. It'll ascend to 60 feet if you're under that to return to home to avoid obstacles. But you can also configure that to be higher if you're in a forest or something like that with really tall trees. So let's go ahead and take it out a ways. And it's complaining saying the battery's low. All right, so now I'm fairly concerned. It's a long ways away. I need to bring it home. We're gonna go ahead and just hold this button down. Okay. It is now beeping. It is officially in come home mode. So let's see uh, if it actually comes home. There it is. Okay. It stopped above my head. Come home, little dove, come home. Okay, I'm standing in the exact same spot. I haven't moved. So let's see where it lands.
Now, as you can see, the aircraft is, is about within, I'd say eight to 10 feet of where it took off, which is fantastic. So if you're in a situation where you've lost sight of the aircraft or you're really frustrated and you can't control it or you're scared, you can always turn to the return to home feature. I don't recommend using it every single time you wanna get your aircraft back because it's always safer for you, the pilot, to stay composed and maneuvered around obstacles. But if you are in a situation where there is nothing else you can do, you can't see the aircraft, that's gonna save you. All right, guys, so we're going to demonstrate the photography potential differences between the Phantom 3 and the Inspire 1. So we're going to start off with the Phantom 3 because it's the less expensive aircraft and the Professional is 4K capable. But I would like to mention right now that if you get the advanced version, it is only 1080p, but it still is a far superior camera than what you'd get on the Phantom 2 Vision yep. Plus V3. God, that's still a mouthful. <laughs> So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and have Graham fly the Phantom 3 up in the air and out way over here and around a giant smokestack. And what we're demonstrating here is that it's very hard to pilot an aircraft and videotape at the same time. And then we can give you a comparison of this before, between this and the Inspire 1 experience. All right, Graham, well, let's get this thing airborne. Guys, I'm not late. All right, well, you guys can see off behind me, there is a giant smokestack in the distance, and that's gonna be our target for this exercise. Now, this aircraft right here has a potential range of a mile. Some people have actually reported that the light bridge setup can get in excess of a mile, but I think that for all intents and purposes and safety, a mile is considered a good estimate. Now, we're not taking it out quite a mile on this demonstration because we do wanna have line of sight of the aircraft while we're doing these maneuvers. But realize that with the Phantom 3, the camera only faces forward and you can actually pan it up and down, but you can't turn it 360 degrees. When you're trying to photograph something, especially a moving target, being able to move and orient the aircraft while you're doing that can be troublesome. Exactly. It really can. And that's what's nice about the Inspire 1 and we're gonna demonstrate here in a little while. So now in order for him to pilot around the smokestack, he's have, having to actually like crab the aircraft sideways and trying to work out all that orientation in your head and track the camera at the same time is very difficult. So the Phantom 3 is more suited for taking a video of like stationary things or tracking something on one axis. It takes a lot more concentration. So another really cool difference to mention here is the new field of view on the cameras is 94 degrees on both the Inspire 1 and on the Phantom 3, whereas on the Phantom 2 Vision Plus, it was 140 degrees, which was a very, very fish eye style experience. So you get a much more natural cinematic experience with the new field of view. Now, another thing to mention is they upgraded the software. Since both of these new aircraft, the Phantom 3 and the Inspire 1 use the light bridge technology, they actually use a new, a new application called DJI Pilot. Now the old application called DJI Vision was actually pretty lackluster in comparison. This one, you have a lot more control over the camera settings and a lot more control over the aircraft in general than you did with the prior generation application. You can also change things in the air like your white balance, your exposure, your speed. Pretty much you can manually control all those aspects of the camera or you can lock them on an automated mode depending on what you wanna shoot or what you're trying to capture. So now we've got the Inspire 1 and we're gonna demonstrate the differences between the Phantom 3 and the Inspire because this thing is a much more capable aircraft for shooting video. Now you'll notice that we're both holding a controller. That's because this comes in two configurations. You can buy it with one controller or you can get a secondary controller and that way one person completely focuses on flying the aircraft and the other person, me in this instance, is controlling the camera and it is full control. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is launch the aircraft right now. We're gonna go over and see what these rally cars behind us are doing and then we'll talk a little bit more about how all these features work. All right, I have a live video feed right now from the aircraft and I can rotate the camera around and look at us. There we are. Hey, what's up aircraft? And I have full control of this camera. I can move it as slow as I want. I can move it as fast as I want. And I can also control the roll on the camera, which can be a little bit tricky for some people. So you might want to disable that. And the software is incredibly accommodating. All right, we're going to be tracking us some rally cars. Let me find one. All right, there we go. Now you get the video. Like here we have a car coming inbound. I'm going to go ahead and track them through the turn. 
perfect. Now, if you saw previously when we, drew, when we flew the Phantom 3 around the smokestack, now we're gonna do the same exact thing with the Inspire 1, except for since I'm focusing on the video, we should be able to get a much better and smoother video than we could with the Phantom. Now what we're gonna do is Graham can just focus on flying around that smokestack, and then I'm just gonna focus on keeping the video on. You also have a lot of options like zebra stripes and a histogram to basically show you if you're overexposing the image. Because out here in the sunlight, when you're looking at something like a cell phone, it can be a little bit tricky. So guys, you can clearly see with the Inspire 1, you have a lot more control because you can work as a team and get the shot that you want. That would be, I'm not gonna say it'd be impossible to get those same shots with the Phantom, but it would be infinitely hard and you'd have to do massive retakes, use a lot of batteries, or be an incredibly skilled pilot. And who has time for that, really, right? So if you're amateur hour and you just wanna take a good video, Inspire 1 and grab a friend. I know I did. All right, guys, so right now we're going to try to race the Inspire 1 against the Phantom 3 to demonstrate the differences in speed of the aircraft. Now, the, on paper, the Inspire 1 does 45 mile an hour forward speed estimated. The Phantom 3 is 10 mile an hour slower at 35 miles per hour, but let's go ahead and see it in practice. Let's do it. Are you ready? Let's get them in the air. We're actually dealing with a fair amount of wind today, too. You see the aircraft holds really stable, even in a fairly high wind. All right. You ready? Hey, you want to race for pink slips? Hey, get get them lined up. Here. Get up a little higher. All right. Get a little bit more on the right there. Awesome. Three, two, two one, one, go. Come on, oh. baby. Oh, I got spanked. Oh, you're smoking me, dude. Oh man, it's like it's like racing a Ferrari versus a Geo Metro. Oh yeah. So it's safe to say that the Inspire One is a much faster aircraft. Oh, dust, dust, this is my enemy. All right, now we're gonna do an ascent speed test on the aircraft, see which one climbs faster. You ready, Graham? Let's do this, ready? All right, three, two, one, go. I think it's just because the, the Phantom is so light. Wow. I was not expecting that at all. So I'm gonna say overall win for ascent speed, I think goes to the Phantom under general use. Definitely, definitely. But if you pick up both aircrafts, you realize just how heavy the Inspire one does. It is, which gives it a phenomenal advantage in wind. But as far as just raw climbing speed, there's something to be said for lightweight aircraft. All right guys, well now you've seen the Inspire 1 and the Phantom 3, both in flight. We've talked about a couple of the features and you guys have seen these aircraft. So now what I wanna do is talk a little bit about the pros and cons of each aircraft and why you would want to get each one of these aircraft. Also, I would like to give a shout out to coptershop.com for providing these aircraft for review. If you guys wanna buy one of these or check them out, check out coptershop.com. They're also creating a YouTube channel right now that there will be a link on that site soon too that'll give tutorials on how to best fly these things and take care of them and everything like that. And it's actually a really, really cool thing. Also, special thanks out to Dirtfish, obviously the place where we are right now because without this facility, we wouldn't really be able to open these things up in such a large area and do so much with them. Now, a few other things that you really wanna consider when investing in these aircraft is that when you're dealing with the Inspire 1, the controller actually has an HDMI out. So you can connect it to an external video source like a large monitor or even FPV glasses and get a low latency connection to the aircraft's camera. That's something that you're really gonna want if you're doing truly professional stuff. Now, when you're dealing with the Phantom, you don't have that same capability at present to do a raw HDMI out. So all you have is the DJI Pilot app and another thing I'd like to mention is that the legs do move out of the way when the aircraft is in flight, as you guys saw earlier, and it allows you to actually pan the camera around and not see the landing gear, which is kind of a big problem you get with this guy when you're flying around, especially at high forward speeds. You do have a tendency to see the propellers and the landing gear in the video, and then you have to edit it out in post doing cropping, which can ruin your video quality. Now, one of the things that I really, really love about the Inspire One, both aircraft have the home point where you can basically hit the oh crap button and get your aircraft to come back to you. 
Now the Inspire 1 actually can return to the controller's location. So if you're flying from a boat or some kind of moving vehicle, you have the option for the aircraft to return back to the point that you are standing at. Whereas with the Phantom 3, it's gonna return back to the estimated GPS coordinates of where it took off, which if you're on a boat is probably in the water. Don't get them in the water. All right, another thing to really, really praise DJI for that they, they've done a really good job with is the DJI Pilot app is very, very good about letting you know when the aircraft is in distress, when you've lost communication, when your battery's getting low. It's very, very verbal about the state of the landing gear and what the aircraft is doing. And that's all very nice because a lot of the mistakes that people make is they let their batteries run dead before they re return home or they lose control of the aircraft because the app crashed or something like that. Well, the nice thing about the new app is it is purely a passive monitor in most respects. If the app crashes, you still have full control of the aircraft through the controller. And personally, one of my favorite features is right here, the little home button. If you hold this guy down at any point, the aircraft will return back to its origin. And that's really important because if the app crashes and you lose your visuals, you're gonna have a problem. Now, the nice thing with the Inspire one, of course, is if you're using the HDMI out with an external monitor, you're not reliant on an application at all. But you also don't get the features of that application unless you're using something like a smart device, which you're really gonna want because it tells you the speed and the altitude and all kinds of great information, including like a map overlay, like Google Maps, so you can see where you're maneuvering. Safety, a lot of people have been kind of ragging on us in the comments about safety. You guys have to respect these. These are dangerous aircraft. They are, they can hurt you and please stop flying these things into power lines. Would you please stop flying these into Air Force protected space? And above all, would you please stop flying them outside of my window? Yeah, seriously, there's, there's nothing to see. All right, now there are of course some cons here with the new software. The DJI Pilot app doesn't support point of interest, which means you can't lock in an area and have the drone basically circle it yet. Now that's gonna be a possibility in the future. And the one that really, really bugs me is that you don't have waypoints, AKA ground station, which you had in the DJI Vision app, which allowed you to basically touch points and set an altitude and the aircraft would autonomously fly for all intents and purposes as a drone to these waypoints and then return home so that if you were an amateur operator and you didn't really know what you're doing, but you did want to capture, say, drive down, you know, one specific area and track it through the woods over a map, you could do it with that feature. And we're still waiting for that feature from DJI. But the upside is they are releasing an SDK, which is going to allow third party developers, much like myself, to design their own software to interact and control the aircraft. Now, I don't know the extent of that SDK yet, but hopefully it's allowing us the kind of control that's really going to take these things to the next level. Now guys, to end this video, we wanna go ahead and do a giveaway. So right here, I have a Proto X. Now this is a tiny little $30 quadcopter. And if you guys didn't see my video, go ahead and check it out. There'll be a link in the video description. It's a very small and very durable little aircraft. We're gonna give this one away to one of you guys. And all that we ask you to do is come over to Twitter and follow at Barnacles and also follow Valair Media. I'm gonna go ahead and sign this bad boy right now. So guys, I will go ahead and announce the winner on the social networks from my app Barnacles account. Also, we'll have it mentioned by Volair Media. So make sure you're following these guys or you won't know you won. If you're looking to get into a quadcopter, you really can't go wrong with these guys. Just think to yourself, what am I trying to achieve? If you're just a hobbyist and you just wanna fly around and have a good time, even a platform like the DJI Phantom 2 is great, but you're not gonna have the massive range that these two have with the light bridge setup. The light bridge setup alone used to cost like $1,500. So it's actually pretty amazing that they've integrated into a product that doesn't even cost that much as an entire package. All right, guys, if you have any questions, go ahead and leave them down below in the comments or come over and tweet me. I am at Barnacles. I'm actually a really social guy. Chances are, if you have a good question, you'll probably get a response. Till next time. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please take a moment and subscribe to my channel. It helps me a lot. Also come over to Twitter. I'm at Barnacles. I'm a real social guy. Also, if you have a couple of minutes, check out some of these many other videos. I made them myself.